over to Ben Ezra. Back in, what a feed to Anthony gets it to go. At the free throw line. Splash. Oh, oh, oh. Hello and welcome into the Max and Athletic Center. This is the NTSY pregame show. And today we have the matchup between the MTA Lions and the Shell Heaven Firehawks. You're not going to want to miss it. Don't go anywhere. We got tip off coming up next. Shall have a push here uh, and try to try to stick how they want it. And it doesn't it doesn't always pay out. The dangers of pushing can be losing control of the ball. Breaking that press pretty easily there. Good, 
good look there, there though, from the corner. As 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 we see more and more in the NBA, the the corner three is a high percent a high percentage shot that teams, teams prefer over a lot of other shots. Nice poke by Rudman there to to get his hands on that and prevent the offensive board. Great, great way to start here for, for FPA go, go, getting the first two buckets here to, to start off. As Shalhevet has not looked as quick as, the, as we might have as we might have expected offensively to start this game. I wouldn't expect it. They do they they do this fairly frequently just because they didn't necessarily have the chance with uh, many playoff games this season. It doesn't mean this isn't something they can, they're used to doing but a lot. As that's a good break of the press to get an easy uh, fast break bucket. Great bucket. Though. Shall have it. Shall, the shall have co met, coach mentioned that he, he was a little scared of them uh, coming out a little rusty, and he thought keeping the pedal to the metal uh, on the gas to uh, push it as much as possible was going to be something that would help them uh, beat that. We apologize for any technical difficulties we're having right now. Just trying to get something sorted out. Cross court, it's Halpert. Gets inside, draws the contact. That will get called, two shots coming. Good, uh, good, quick start by MTA go, go, going up early. This is this, this is exactly all they all they could have hoped for here as we as we get as we got started as a three, three, three basket lead early is is more than they could have hoped. Good shot is no good. You'd like to thank Dougie's for being a proud Max Life sponsor for the best barbecue and grill in Teaneck. Make your way to Dougie's. Go to Dougie'sBBQ.com to order. The link is in the description of this video. And when he spoke to anyone on FDA before the game, this has got to be a dream start. As Halper goes over two, offensive rebound. Grab and number four. That's Aiden Dutron hitting the three. So 7-3 early on. That is a terrible outcome here uh, as it, letting up the offensive rebound is not a, is not a good look off of, off of this free throw. That leads to the easy three. And then throwing it away, trying to beat the press there. That's not that's not a good sequence. This is something uh, that shall have to take advantage of. That, that those are the those are the unforced errors. It's Halpert. Stern. Too strong on the three. Dutron grabs the rebound but throws it away. So a couple, couple offensive rebounds for the Firehawks as Halpert takes it all the way and gets fouled. But it, it is something to look out for. These offensive rebounds, number 11, Samuel Jacobson, listed at 6-2 for Shall Have It. As Rifkin was the one uh, who, who got the pass from Halpert to go, to go up and got fouled there. Crowd goes quiet. A large contingent here are MTA fans. First shot, no good. They are the whole school here, but at, at, as, nature, as nature of how it goes based on seeding, being the whole school, they're still the 16th seed, so they're treated as the road, as the road team here, as as Joe Warburg check, checks in for Swole Cruz for FPA. Second shot, no good from Rifkin. So an empty possession for the Lions, and here comes Halpert. Kick out, pump on the three, one step in. Good defense. Shot was nowhere close. As MTAs rushed it a little more than we than we expected uh, early here, as uh, they uh, they've looked to slow it, but uh, shall have it has forced them to to play their style a little more, and it ha it hasn't worked yet. But we'll, we'll see we'll see if playing fast does does actually uh, benefit benefit shall have it as we as we go uh, further into this game. As it looks 
looks like we had some sort of malfunction here uh, to, try, to try to get Iron down as we had a stopper play there. Go there, Tiger Hill Rudman. Elijah Stern wanted to push, but it'll slow it down. Number zero, Usha Lung checked into the game for the Firehawks. The death shot is blocked by Rifkin. Rudman steps into a triple. Back iron. Usha Lung grabs the rebound. Um, as Rud Rudman is MTA's best shooter here, so it it's it's nice to see him even in, even in transition go go going quick quick towards it. That's precisely what you're going to want. Though the shot, as the shot the coach pointed out, both teams haven't played played much recently, so the outside shots might be something that's tough to come back. Burger on the fast break absorbs the contact, throws it up and in. Nine three Lions, and a steal by Rudman. Who wants it? Nathan on the ground. He'll retain possession for the Firehawks. Stern gets it to go. A very all over the place start in this game. As Rudman turns the ball over, picking it out of bounds. Has we got Daniel Barrett checking in here for Gabriel Rudman. Correct, yeah. Rudman and Halpert. The two premier ball handlers and stars on this MTA team if they're going to want to pull up the upset today. Those two are going to have to be performing at the highest level. Yeah, and the MTA faithful have, in, have invoked the narrative of the, FD, the FDU team, uh, a 16 seed uh, in March Madness, a local team from TNAC that pulled off the upset of the number one seed of Purdue. March Madness Halper with the turnover. Yeah, the Scarlet Knights. Well, maybe just the Knights now. Of course, taking down Purdue in the first round of the NCAA tournament. This would be, I would say, 100 times more impressive. Here at the Sarachek tournament for a 16 seed to beat a one. As Swishore checked in for Aiden Berger. Crap, yeah. Barron, two steps and up. A little wild attempt. And back come the Firehawks. Stern gets blocked. The other way come NTA. One, two, up. Layup too strong. Back and forth we go. No one seems so set. That's a good cut by Halpert. Who aimlessly throws the ball out of bounds. Thought he drew some contact. Ref didn't see it that way. That'll be the seventh turnover this quarter by Shall Have It. As Rudman comes back into the game since we show him. Again, getting him a quick leader to uh, help maybe tell him to uh, slow down the pushing a little and take advantage of the fact that Shall Have It's a little wild with their, with their, uh, with the basketball right now, playing so quick and maybe uh, implore them to slow it down. And, uh, as they play quickly also. Very interesting start to this game. Halford. Rudman to check back onto the court. Halford the floater now. Mendelssohn with the board. So quickly down the court of the Firehawks. Two passes and it's already on the other end. Foul will be called on the floor. So what's it been? What's been the catalyst of this MTA start? It looks like they've uh, been able to control playing, playing at the speed that they, they didn't want to play at. They've been more in control of playing so quickly. We try to open in the corner. Way too strong. Berger to Halpert inside. Beautiful passing play. Lamb can't be finished off by Rifkin. Missed opportunity there. 35 seconds on the game clock, 25 on the shot clock. Defense, 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 defense. 
really a seven second differential. It took me a while to get that out. Shalhaven does have experience with playing with the shot clock in California, which MPA does not. Sell him no good. Rudman now with five. A little early on the half court heave. Still going to be a second left as Berger got a little excited. And throws it off the bridge on top. That's got to be the first time that's happened. Yeah, an early heave is not something you see very frequently. Seems like there's .2 on the clock. There should really be two seconds. All right, there, now it's fixed. So she'll have it, will have a chance to get a shot up. Interesting decision by MPA to actually play the full press there to try to stop it. Out. Halpert no good on the half court heave. That's the end of the first quarter. MPA up nine to five, don't go anywhere. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch. Like, really, from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Cover to every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my chavrita. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Okay, that, that is precisely the qu uh, quarter that MPA will most definitely take here early as they, they're up four after one quarter here. That, that, that's something that they have to be happy about, but they, they gotta see if they can control uh, the pace a little more and not play the shall have its uh, fast pace as, as as if they were, if they played a little slower, it would be interesting to see. Maybe they would be. Yeah, it was a good first half. Follow your path at YU. Learn how you can jumpstart your graduate education with a Pathways dual degree or early assurance program. Join us at our March info, info sessions taking place on campus or on Zoom. For the full schedule, please visit yu.edu slash pathways slash info sessions. That is yu.edu slash pathways slash info hyphen sessions. Start planning for your future today. As MPA gets the start, stop out of the gate and a look to build on this four point lead. Coach Ricky Sullivan. Legendary coach for MPA. A nice behind the back pass. Can he finish it off? Oh! Bean box! Those are the kind of plays that can be spoke, spoke, spoken about for a while uh, here at Saracac. If, uh, that's the kind of play that could be could be spoken about as a catalyst for uh, for an upset here. Now it's Halpert, one of the best players in this tournament. He's going to have to get going. Shot blocked. It'll stay with the Firehawks, but he's going to have to get going if Shall Have It wants to come back because they just don't. They're not matching MPA's energy as of now. Really not. We have to. We have to see if they're gonna if they're gonna find any uh, half court offense here by doing something other than just uh, trying to play fast and uh, and force the force force the force MPA to make errors because even the errors MPA is making, they're not capitalizing on. Rudman almost poked it away. Halpert's got it back. Sale no good. Back come MPA. It's Berger. Rudman and Berger have a catch. Berger. Halpert. Strilly. Yeah, it'll be an offensive foul. Put his shoulder down to try to create space. MPA up 12 to 5. What's it going to take for Shalhavik to get things going on the offensive end? It might actually take, contrary to what they what they tend to look to do, slowing it down, slowing it down for a little to make sure you uh, figure out a way 
to at least uh, get some offense going at some point because yes you're forcing a lot of errors errors offensively by MPA you're forcing forcing turnovers also and uh, miss, miss shots but if you can't if you can't capitalize on the other end it, it won't help so much when you when, when you start off down Salam to the corner three now good Shalom grabbed the board and the get foul. Uh, this is something to watch out for. If uh, Shalom can capitalize, they have, they have a bunch of offensive boards here early. If, if they're gonna if they're gonna keep grabbing a lot of the offensive boards, they 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 might get second chance opportunities, which are easy chances at buckets. So that's something you want to get up against. Okay. Warburg, who just checked in, gets the rejection. Rebounds being fought for. Who wants it more? Foul be called. A number five, Nathan Salam. And as this game continues to move along, MDA might start to really believe in their chance to take down the number one seed. I don't know if there was ever a doubt on the MTA side. It seems like uh, it seems like uh, being here on campus is something they believed in. They believed in all along that they that they deserve to have a chance here in, the, in this game. Yes, it is the 16 versus the one, and there hasn't been a such an upset before here in the Saturday tournament. But they 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 they, they, they believe the record does not indicate what they are. As as the Halper did begin the season with the Golden Foot and did miss it did miss a month or so. So it's something, it's something people watch out for that they might play higher than the seed really is. Elijah Stern, no good on the way. Rifkin cannot get the foul to fall. Dutron. Halpert with his left, leaves it short. Berger's got it, and he gets fouled. 5.27 to go in the second quarter. MTA leads all have it by a score of 12 to five. I have to imagine Coach Selvin's not so happy by that push by Berger. So you, gotta, you gotta slow that down. You're playing, too, you're playing, you're playing a little too quickly there. That's playing towards Shalhaven's strength. Lucky to, get, lucky to get that foul there. He almost turned it over. Berger, Barron, Barron keeps his pivot, Warburg, Berger tries a triple, oh if it fits it shifts, there's Shalom, ball stolen, layup good, so a little bit sloppy, but Elijah Stern ends up being the beneficiary and puts the two points on the board for Shalhevit. First points they've scored this quarter. This was something Coach Selvin warned about. That, that came about by MPA not getting back after a basket. That is the, uh, that is the outcome of Shalhevit playing quick and push at any time, any opportunity they get. So that's something to watch out for. Halbert, using his left hand, goes high off glass. Halpert gets inside. Beautiful pass. Foul be called on Halpert. He's upset at himself. That's Samuel Jacobson, number 11. He's now number 20. Ezra Hassel Corn checking in for MDA for the first time today. That's more players having out of the game than MTA, than MTA usually does. It looks, it looks like Coach hasn't been so happy with uh, to play, as MTA tends to only play seven or eight players. We've already seen our eighth player in the game here. So it'll be interesting to see down, down, down the line. Ball stolen. A lot of loose balls. This one goes to Elijah Stern. Now it's Halford. Tron. Halpert maneuvers inside and uses his left hand. And you can see how talented Abby Halpert is. Just weaving his way through the defense. Yeah, and it's, in it's interesting to see. It looks like uh, Shalhavik's going to drop the press now. Uh, 
Uh, defensively, as they didn't press there off the off the made basket, this was something this was something the coach mentioned that he was only going to be able to press early to try to force the issue. But if it's not working defensively, of course, MPA to play quicker. As even though as even though they had even though they have, it still hasn't led to enough enough uh, errors for Shahada to be able to capitalize on that they're gonna uh, that that they're gonna uh, they most likely might scrap again. As that's a second foul on uh, Ezra Halpert for FDA, and uh, Rudman comes back and comes back into a placing uh, as uh, not something Coach Sullivan wants to wants to, wants to take the risk with, with here, as it's called the offensive foul. Right Berger also checking in. Knows Shalom checking back in for the Firehawks. It's Elijah Stern. Halpert inside. Rejected by Rifkin. Now it's Rudman for MTA. That'll be a blocking foul called. That'll be on number 10, Elijah Stern. Reminder to stay tuned to the Camp Step It Up halftime show. You're not going to want to miss it. We're going to go down to our sideline reporter who's going to be interviewing one of the coaches. We got to get it in. And Rugby catches. And somehow stays with it. He stepped out of bounds. So a turnover there by MTA. And Chal Hebbett looks to cut into this lead a little bit more on this offensive possession. As Sweet Short came back into the game for MTA, so we have seen them uh, dip uh, a little further into the bench than, than anticipated here. Are we? Halpert, three, got it. So she'll have it. has been looking to get the ball inside most of the game. But if we can open things up from outside, they'll have more success working it down low. Rudman, beautiful pass inside, way too strong on the layup. It was Warburg. Half of the other way, Euros. Corner three, wide open, got it. That shall have a basketball. Josh Ascari puts the finishing cuts on that. And that's, a, that's, a big, that's a big swing, right there, a six, six point swing. And, uh, other turnover by MTA, a lot of errors now. Shall have it is uh, is taking advantage here. And Halpert from Jimmer range, just a little short, but he's starting to get into his rhythm, and you can see his confidence growing. Time that will be called by MTA. NTSY Summer is the premier summer trip provider for Jewish team teams across the world. With over 20 plus programs spanning the US, Israel, Europe, NTSY Summer can find something for you. Visit summer.ntsy.org. I personally went on NTSY Cola. As did I. It was a and great, su great summer. Yeah, I've been back a lot. I'm at a, and I'm looking forward to my seventh summer this summer. Seventh summer. Wow. 137 to go in the first half. MTA started so strong. So I'll have it come back of late. It seems to have the momentum. How important is this next minute and a half for MTA? For MTA, they've got they've got they've got to do everything they can to maintain this lead going into halftime. As as that was a quick swing back, they were up uh, they were up a lot for a while, and then uh, shall have it uh, cut right back into it. So MTA has got. If MTA want, want, wants to have a chance in this game, they've got to they've got to stay strong here and make sure they have a they maintain this lead going into halftime. Defense, 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 defense. Beautiful offensive set, and it's finished off by number 34, Yosef Warburg. Firehawks respond. As that seems to wake up the MTA crowd there as they were stunned for a second there. Ball on the ground. 
Shalom got it. Off the stern. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Now it's Halper with five on the shot clock. Pulls up, that's a two, and he's got it. Oh, they're giving him a three? No, they gave him a two, my apologies. It's Halpert, off to Rudman. Ascari was harassing him, so he gave it all. Berger now, open three after the ankle breaker. No good. Rebound goes to Shalhevit. Shot clock turned off and a chance to tie or even take the lead. Six left on the game clock. Three left on the game clock. Halpert. Who's it going to be? No shot's going to be taken. Halftime. And we're going to send it down to our sideline reporter, Varric Hamlin, standing by with Coach Ushi Sullivan. Varric? Seems to be that we're having some technical issues. Um, we apologize for that. We're going to send it to halftime. Don't go anywhere.
When I was in ninth grade, someone told me to give up on ball. He told me, basketball will only take you so far in life. You're not going to make it to the NBA, he said. What he was missing is that making it to the NBA isn't the only reason why we play. basketball leaves you with so much more than just the game itself. The life lessons and friendships that are made while playing the game will outlive the game and can last a lifetime. Hello and welcome back into the Max Center Athletic Center. MTA leading Shell Heaven by a score of 19 to 18. This is the Step It Up Basketball Halftime Show. We've got big news. Camp Step It Up is back at Hobart College in Geneva, New York, for summer of 2023. Camp will start on June 21st and end on August 2nd with one to six week options. We have an option for you. Hobart is located just four and a half hours north of New York City and busing will be offered to camp from New York City and Teaneck. Camp is open to all boys and girls grades 3 to 12 with one to six weeks options available. Gorgeous campus facilities include air conditioned rooms, six indoor basketball courts, a weight room, a lakefront and beachfront on and near campus, lounges and more. For more information, email office at campstepitup.com or visit time to step it up.com or call 888-600-0908. That is 888-600-0908. Here's a fun fact. You know that half of YU's roster this year actually attended Camp Step It Up? Wow. Including Michael Natkin, Adi Markovich, Oren Batesh, Max Zakon, and more. So if you are a basketball player, you're going to want to check it out. Yep. So Asher, 19-18, the 16th seed up on the one seed. What's been holding Shaw have it back this far? I'm not sure there's anything specific uh, more, more than more than some nerves uh, nerves here early and uh, a little bit of rust as they haven't played haven't played a, a game in uh, six weeks. Yeah, it has to be noted. Shall have it. LA in general, but shall have it specifically. Just such a big basketball school, such a big basketball state, city, I guess, for the Jewish basketball league, and they always come out and they always show out. And they're the favorites to win this year's tournament as the one seed. But their backs are up against the wall. Down a point in round one. So we'll see if they can respond. And restore order. This opening to the second half is especially important. As you can't, as you can't let, uh, you can't let uh, Shalhavet uh, take, take that lead now. You gotta hold it. You gotta hold it the whole way because Shalhavet will keep the uh, their foot on the gas as they showed even even when they were down. And you saw how quickly Shalhavet can answer. It seems like they were down by at least 10 points the whole first half, and then in the blink of an eye, it was a one-point game. So they definitely have the skill set, the ability. Now they just have to put it into practice. 19-18, 16 minutes left in this game. Third quarter, just about ready to begin as both teams walk out. Again, MTA in the blue, shall have it in the white. MTA was worried where they would get the offensive firepower from in order to, in order to be in order to be able to keep up. A low scoring game definitely plays into their strengths as offense is something that they they might find it, it to be a struggle at points. But 1918, they've got to be thrilled with that as a 16 team. They're just about ready to go. The second half is underway. Rodman, spin move, loses it, turnover. So it was a nice idea, execution was not there. Aiden 
with Dutron. Beating it up for Shell Habit. Looking to take the lead. Will be their first lead of the game. Now it's Halford. Turn around from the free throw line. Swirly Scott for the rebound. Wow. Beautiful reverse layup by Aiden Berger. And He's got 10. Right Shalabit right, right back the other way, as the, the coach spoke about. As it, Coach Shalabit spoke about it. Shalabit's going to push even off the made basket from the other team. Halford drains the mid ranger. Next to the court. That Berger's got 10 points. He's been putting on a show. Maybe not who you expected at the beginning of the game, but he's definitely balled out. As Rudman off one leg, that's short. And Jacobson secures the rebound, and back comes Shalhevich. The range there is something that uh, is a decent piece of the shot as far as big shots come, but the execution matters too. That's a corner three, no good. Rudman skies for the board. MTA will slow it down. That will be called. That will be on Jacobson. First foul committed this half. As this game has become a closer game, the MTA crowd's been a little more subdued than they were at the beginning when they were up uh, big. We'll see if they could uh, keep the energy here to uh, force the pressure on Shalhabit, or Shalhabit can keep them silent by uh, taking a lead now. Here comes Berger. Beautiful pass inside and finished off by Rifkin. Wow, Aiden Berger, star of the show right now. Yeah, 100%, and you're, and you're seeing the ball go to his hands more because he's the hot hand and he's not looking to just force off the shot, though, looking, looking to be able to teammates too also. Salem uses his body nicely and gets the layup to fall. Both teams have come out strong in the second half. Berger. That'll be a blocking foul called. That should be shooting, I believe, but I think it's going to be called on the ground. That's that the third foul on Jacobson, so he'll take a seat. And that's a big loss. He's 6'2". Tallest player on the Shell have a team. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if they have an answer. Uh, MTA stuck with the two, the two big boys the whole way, whether it's whether it's Slowly and Rifkin or uh, getting getting Warburg in there. Uh, we we've, we've seen them we've seen them stay big, to try to force up for, and it's and it's worked as they've had a lot of blocks at the defensive end, getting their hands on everything, not getting easy shots from a lot of people. Come to Como Pizza for some great pizza, pasta, salads, and even awesome breakfast options. We will be streaming the games in the store, making it a great place to watch the games while you eat. And if you just watched that commercial from Lake Como, I hope you're having a good time and eating good. You see the coaching staff for Shall Have It. They don't look too pleased right now. I'm not sure if they expected to have this much of a fight on their hands. Definitely not. Definitely into the game for MTA, Josef Warburg. Surly Pyrazer taking a seat. Shall have it with uh, another chance to take the first lead of the day here. Let's see if they can capitalize. Halper with the Euro and the scoop leg. MTA's got to do what they can to slow that momentum as this is a Shall have its first lead. And they, they, they do have a contingent here that, that we're starting to hear get a little loud. And Halper with the steal. That might be a clear pass foul. What are they going to call? I don't think it was. I think I, I, th I think it got tangled up as he got the steal and he lost his balance. It wasn't, it wasn't an after. It was as he got the steal. You're right. No call there. No clear path there. We're going to see this replay. Halper 
with the steal, gets tripped up. Hold on, we have another issue. Seems like when everyone, once a player falls, the sweat makes the floor slippery. Usually with the YU games, they'll have someone wipe it up. It's not the case right now. Halper, that's a three, too strong. Halper with the rebound. Beautiful pass. No foul called there. And back comes Avi Halpert. Extra pass. That's a tough layup. Salem probably should have just taken the three, decided to take it in. Defense collapsed on him. So MTA brings the ball back down the court. Down one, down for the first time today. It's Berger. And that'll be a travel. He doesn't like it. Referee doesn't care. MTA has not looked panicked even as even as their lead, lead disappeared. They look they, they, they look cool, cool and confident and, and like they're still in this game. And it's all it's all about execution on the offensive end as we spoke about. It's something they might struggle with. So we'll see if they can uh, they can get anything going. Ball goes inside, swung back out to the corner. Now it's Halpert. With Halpert on him. Beautiful offense by the Firehawks. Shot no good, over the top, gonna be called. But you just saw how they broke down that zone. As this is from before the travel being called. And the longer that MPA stays in this game, the more nerve-wracking it's going to get for this shall have a team. And if they start to press, anything can happen. I mean, press themselves. Not taking full court. Number two, Barron into the game for FTA. Almost loses his footing. Corner. Barron. Halpin on him. Behind his back dribble. Halpert stifling defense. Five on the shot clock. That's a tough, off one foot, step back, no good. Shot clock violation called. Great defensive possession by Shal Hebert. Great job by Shal Hebert staying with it the entire way. That's a tough thing, tough thing to do. A uh, 35 second shot clock can feel long at times. Staying there the whole way defensively to, to force FTA to take a tough shot and uh, force that violation is not, not something so easy to do. Bobby Halpert with eight on the shot clock. Easy blow by. Works his way inside. No good on the lay. The follow though. Foul be called on the ground. Oh Shalom crashing boards. And quickly into the game checks Josh Ascari. Salam did not look good there. Looked a little hobbled. Uh, grab, grab the leg there. Corner three is open. The try no good. Grabbed there by Warburg. Score's been 24-23 for a few minutes now. Both teams struggling to get anything going offensively. And Ezra Halpert lost it there for a second. He's gonna stay with MTA. And Ezra's gonna take a seat. Aiden Berger, who's been the star thus far for MTA, is checking back in. Smart move by Coach Selvin, uh, going one by one with his starters to get them to uh, get them to breather. As he as he saw Berger was looking looking like he was pressing a little, so he took he took him out for a quick for a quick one to let it uh, get going. Yeah. Rudman, tough shot. That's gonna hit the sixth defender. They gotta blow that dead. They don't. So back come the Firehawks. See if they can build on this lead. I wonder if that's something that that the refs are told to look out for by Coach Steinmetz in the Bayou games, but that it, that's called so regularly. You don't, you don't see that as often in high school games. 
against Colton Sullivan doesn't care to pop it out. Austin Carries, who might be hard to see, as that's a beautiful Euro step. Can't get the layup to fall, but a fight for the rebound, and it'll be a jump ball. So it was a nice job by Butron to even get into position to make that layup. Layup didn't fall, but he fights his way into a jump ball, and shall have it will retain possession. I just want to take this time to wish my Saba and Safta a happy anniversary. I don't know if they're watching. But happy anniversary to them. As now we are seeing uh, YU has got some of the, uh, the pan out to try to, to try to wipe out the board as it, it seems to be getting very slippery. As MTA starts to get loud again, they've brought out, they've brought out some noisemakers now to try to, to try to get the crowd going. They've got a very large section behind the bench. Here. You always got to wonder if uh, instead of the sixth defender, the sixth man on the court can, uh, can, make, a, can make a difference uh, with, the, with the home. When, even though the visitor school here, the, this is their home court, they do, they, the visitor team not the visitor school, they're the, they're the home school. So they have, uh, they have the advantage of having a lot of students at this game. Halpert switches to his left hand. And you're right about that. MTA has a big advantage being able been a lot of fans of these games. But these out-of-town schools, they do a good job also. A lot of them bring their senior grades. And they'll fill up the gym. This last game, and this isn't out-of-town, but Frisch had this gym packed as Rudman shoots a big three, and he's got it. Tie game, first point for MTA in a while. That's a massive shot as that, uh, as that, as that, uh, that swings the momentum right like back. That. That's exactly that, what MTA needed there, and Rudman, their best shooter, stepping up, stepping up in the culture. That floater's no good. Who wants the rebound? Halpert does. Petron. Cross court. Halpert pulls up. Mid ranger. Back iron. Rebound. Knocked off. Knocked out, pardon me, by the Firehawks. So it'll go down to MTA. Check back, check back in here to try to, uh, try to control this one as there's a 0.8 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock, so MTA is probably going to hold for one and not let Shell have it, uh, get a shot off here before the end of the third quarter. As they have a chance to go for one, if they, if they get the last shot off here and hit it, they, they have a possession out right now, so that could, that could be something that's big to look out for here. Yeah, slows it down. Ezra Halpert. 12 on the shot clock. And the game clock, as you mentioned before. Berger almost poked away. Halpert gets it back with three on the clock. He's going to have to put it up. He puts up a triple. He got fouled. So that'll be three shots. A bad foul by Avi Halpert on Ezra. Ezra will have three shots with .1 left on the clock. Um, I think you gotta get point three, point three, I think point eight on the clock as, it, as, as that was the shot clock difference here. And if you go over like that, where the, where the foul's called? It's a good point. Right when the foul's called, the clock has to be stopped, and if there was a point eight differential, there's gotta be point eight left on the clock. Doesn't seem like they're gonna change it. First shot. It's good. We would like to thank Chopsticks for being a proud Max Live sponsor. For the best Chinese food in Chinec, you've got to go to Chopsticks. Head to ChopsticksUSA.com to order online. The link is in the description of this video. That's how we missed the second free throw there. Uh, it's a one point lead right now. Let's see if they can extend it here. Uh, going to the fourth quarter as they get the ball back to start. So Halpert made one of three, giving MTA a one-point lead. Fourth quarter is coming. You're not going to want to miss it. 16 seed up on the one seed by a point. Don't go anywhere. What does it mean to be yourself? It's being bold. Oh, my goodness. It's 
having heart. I know that I have a responsibility and a platform uh, to shed light on the Jewish community as a whole. This is the professional debut for Ryan Terrell. He's trying to be the first ever Orthodox Jew to play in the NBA. But most of all, it's being proud and wearing it. Clipped helped Ryan's fans show their pride. Let us help you spread the pride at your school with your own hassle-free merch shop. Contact Clip today for your free consultation. Never be afraid to be who you are. Follow your path at YU. Learn how you can jumpstart your graduate education with a Pathways dual degree or early assurance program. Join us at our March info sessions taking place on campus or on Zoom. For the full schedule, please visit yu.edu slash pathways slash info dash sessions. Start planning for your future today. And the future for both these teams right now up in the air. Yeah, very much. Very impressive by FTA to retain that lead. That was a bad foul by Avi Alford. And, and l l luckily uh, for Shalhevet, uh, he only hit one. Let's see if FTA can take advantage of starting the fourth quarter with the ball also and see if they can build on that lead here as they're the 16th seed here looking to upset the number one seed. Both of these teams are going to have to dig deep. Shall have it for sure feeling the pressure. Being a number one seed, expected to probably roll through their first round game. And MTA might feel like they're playing with house money a little bit right now. Really putting up a good fight. Eight minutes on the clock. Winner moves on to the tier one quarterfinal. The loser will still play basketball. We'll move to the tier two tournament, which obviously is still very important, but both these teams have their eyes set on winning a tier one championship. Warburg steps back, back iron. Beautiful box out by Selam and back he comes. Petron, Selam. Stern lost it for a second. Halpert straight on. Got it. Two point lead for the Firehawks. As Shall Heaven has now figured out how to break this 3-2 uh, zone, you have to wonder if FTA is going to stick to it the whole way here. As we saw it a bit in the third quarter, but there on the first possession of the fourth quarter, uh, breaking, breaking down to lead to that easy triple is not, is not something, is not something you, uh, you want to see if you're Coach uh, Selvin here. Ball was deflected out of bounds. None of the refs have, I'm a little curious what's going on right now. Oh, they are getting rid of the fans that are on the baseline. They're gonna have to give people more room, the players more room, in order to ensure safe play. I'm surprised they're not doing more. They usually don't let anyone anywhere near the baseline. That's a bad turnover by MPA here. Oh, that is gonna count. Spin move, beautiful layup by Selam. I thought it was a travel at first. But it counts for two. Beautiful move. Firehawks up four. This is their largest lead of the day. This is a big possession right now for MTA. They need a bucket. Halpert. Mid-range jumper. Short. Rebound. Halpert. And he's going to push. That'll be a reaching foul on Berger. So at the gate here in the fourth quarter, it's been all shall have it. That's not a terrible foul there as, uh, as FTA needed a second to recollect themselves as that's a bunch of uh, possessions swinging in uh, shall have its favor there. You gotta try to see if you can get the defense going there to set up the offense. Well, they got it back. Still a four point game. Six and a half to go. 16 versus one. Rudman. They're running some off ball stuff for him, looking to get him going from outside. Trying to beat this man defense. They have, they've had, had a tough time in a lot of portions, put a lot of portions in this game. It's a good take by Warburg. Warburg took it up strong, could not get the layup to fall. Back up the Firehawks. Beautiful English. Aiden Bitron. And MTA is going to call a timeout. So a big, big start to the fourth quarter by Shall Heaven. Their faithful are getting into it. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. That was pretending to take it back by, by Lampert. Give it to Terrell. 
Welcome back into the Maxton Athletic Center. Marshall Heaven has flexed their muscles to start this fourth, fourth quarter. That's a quick 7-0 run. Not something you want to see if you're FDA here. And uh, it might be a little too late to take the time out. You have to wonder if you should take it in one possession earlier. Marshall heaven has been good at basketball for so long. Some greats in the building. Asher Dower, Jacob and Ezra, Noah Rossi. Just great players, great teams. And the newest addition to the greats list, Avi Halpert. And every year, year in, year, year out, they're competitive and competing in this tournament for a Tier 1 championship. Obviously led by head coach Ryan Coleman. Does such a great job with the Firehawks program. Shall have it, did win the championship the last two times. They were the number one seed back in 2019 and 2018. So they're looking to make it three times in a row with the number one seed and they win. Yeah. If my math is correct. That would be correct. So... That would have been a massive upset uh, for MPA here. They're still not out of it if they can uh, if they can if they can see the momentum back in there. And it's starting with defense for the Firehawks. They're just tenacious. Fast break, one, two. Almost a dunk. One to zero. That's Oshello on the finish. MK looks exhausted on the floor now. You have to wonder if they ran out of gas. It's made defense timing them out. That will be called there on Shell Have It. The ref's calling something. It looks like a shot clock malfunction there. Looking ahead. Next game is going to be between the Korachayim and SAR. You're not going to want to miss that. And then later tonight, TABC takes on Valley Toro. Some more basketball coming your way. It's all on Max Live. The steal. The foul. No good on the layup. But Halpert. It starts on the defensive end, and he's just playing gritty basketball. MTA not having any answers right now on how to uh, how to hold possession. This was something they were afraid of. Too many turnovers. And this is the way it goes. A lot of the times when these lower seats play well, but don't do enough to pull away, the number one seed will, will turn on the Jets towards the end and really try to step on the throats of the lower seeded team. And we see it sort of happening right now as the lead is up 10 for Shaw Heaven with five minutes to go. Rodman falling away. It's a tough look. Rebounded by Warburg. Halpert. That three is good. That is a massive shot from Ezra Halpert there. You've got you've to get every basket you can. Right oh, and the response. Wow. So fast down the court. It's Elijah Stern and one. That was that, that was something Coach Selvin uh, spoke, spoke about before the game. That it was something uh, they got to get back on defense. They're not doing it. Shall have it taking advantage. They're always pushing. Barron checking into the game for the Lions. Nine point game, 4.38 to go. It's been an entertaining game, both teams playing hard and playing well. As the free throw was made. MTA thought they uh, had, had a chance and the big three from Halper, but uh, shall, have, shall have a response right there with their own three point play there. MTA's gonna have to dig deep to get some offense going. Ball knocked out of bounds by Aiden Bitron. 
So possession will stay with MTA. And they're gonna have to start doing a better job in transition, especially on made baskets. You don't often see that. But the Firehawks are so quick down the court. Yeah, that was something Coach Salvin spoke about before the game. He, he, they spoke about it as if they were prepared for it, but they still haven't found the count before all day. Even when they weren't getting the baskets, it was still something they were doing. Initial shot blocked, but Rifkin gets the second one to go. Shot's no good. Salem thought he got hacked. I don't blame him. Nothing was called. MTA looking to cut into this lead a little bit more. Halpert, stutter dribble. Almost stolen by Halpert. That's got to be a foul. That's crazy. It's Halpert. That's definitely a foul. And yeah, that's, that's going to be a clear pass foul. The refs discussing, just sorting this out, how many shots it will be. Definitely will be shots and ball for the Firehawks. With that free throw, Halpert's at 20 points, leading all scorers. And number 21, and you can just see how good he is. Both on offense and on defense. Halpert in the corner. Lead back up to 10. They're going to be content with maybe slowing this down a little, letting the clock bleed. It often goes that way when you, when you, when you get a big lead here in the fourth quarter. The smart coaches will, uh, will tell their team to pl play out the shot clock for its fullest because that's a bad turnover with 15 seconds to long shot clock there. Substitution being made for MTA, as Chapel was called in the last possession. MTA is going to have to uh, find a way to force turnovers as Shell Heavens can uh, now flip the narrative and look to play slower defense, offensively at least, uh, to waste some of the clock here. Rudman draws the double. And throws it away. Coach Sullivan going to call a timeout. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. 10-point game, 3.05 to go. You're not going to want to miss the end of this one. Asher, what are you seeing right now? What I'm seeing right now is Coach Selvin trying to find a way to force uh, Shell Havoc to play faster, which is uh, the opposite narrative of, uh, of what we saw the entire game till now. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Shell Havoc can stay calm and play slow and, uh, to bleed out the clock. Now they have, enough of, they have enough of a lead that the clock becomes their friend now. MTA is going to have to play a little faster now. And FDA, they just haven't gotten the shots up this quarter. A lot of turnovers, and, and they haven't been unforced errors. So Havitz really doing a good job defensively. Speeding up this MTA team. Doubles when need be, and that's a beautiful pass. And finish by Oshalo. There's Nathan on the pass. He's been so good tonight. How how long uh, shall have been able to stay with like with their uh, with the, with the with the man defense all the way and they haven't looked tired. They look like they've gotten even stronger. Layup no good. That time MTA is playing to 
force them to play faster uh, seems to work as, it, as, you, as, you, as you get them going the other way to the liquor. Yeah, that's always a point that's often debated whether or not as you're trying to bleed out the game as Halpert with the steal and layup. And a timeout called by the Firehawks, so we'll get to that point later. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, I believe this time, and we'll be back for the end of this one. Welcome back, 12 point game, 2.04 to go in the fourth. And you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned after the game for our YU Pathways post game show. So after the final buzzer sounds, do not go anywhere. You have to wonder what Co Coach Coleman said there in the huddle area. You have to wonder if he's gonna, if he's gonna look to uh, have play slower offensively, even, even off the rules. Yeah, that's always the debate. When you're being pressed, if you break that press, do you pull it out, or do you go try to hit an easy layup? But if you miss the layup, it was too quick of a possession. So you gotta find that balance. Yeah. Always a tough one here. As uh, we'll, 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 see, we'll see how this one goes. 12 points is, uh, is, a, is a lot to overcome with 49. But as you'll be very much said, it ain't, it ain't over till it's over. Another steal by Halford. I sound like a broken record. Shall have it on the break. Foul and one. That all but do it. Shall have it flexing their muscles on the defensive end and it leads to offense and a chance for a three point play. And the MTA crowd is silent now. Stunned us sitting here in the fourth quarter. Not, not, not much to say as they uh, as they as this seems to be uh sort of a knockout, knockout punch here for Shal Evan. You didn't see any of this. This came out of nowhere here as Ami Halper checks out of the game there. A one point game going into the fourth and Shal Evan has just blown it open. Up 14, a minute and a half left. Players obviously still gonna play hard. It's Berger. Halper to three, no good. It's cool when these bench players get an opportunity to show what they've got, showcase their skills and talent, and sometimes they'll they'll win themselves some playing time in more meaningful minutes if they play well. Yes, but oftentimes that's going to come if you get a more of an, a little bit more of an extended look, not when you get only the final minute. Burger hits the layup. Up there, we'll take a timeout. You have to remember, there's still a lot of basketball to come this weekend, so it's a it's a it's a tough balance here, uh, trying to balance uh, play playing until, until while you still think you have a chance to keep your stars in. But you have to remember, they they could be, they could be playing as many as as uh, four games four games in the next four days. Five games in five days is a lot of basketball. And, and it's a lot of swing on the schedule. Tomorrow, tomorrow uh, is get, tomorrow's games could be, could be much earlier in the day. First game, I believe tomorrow is at 8 o'clock. That will be a Tier 2 game. First Tier 1 game will be at 9.30. That's early for anyone. So it's a quick turnaround for all teams in the tournament. Clock never started, so we're going to re inbound the ball. M MTA hung, hung around for a while, but they didn't seem to have enough 
throw a punch that was too much for Sean to overcome. Other than that first quarter, and Sean was able to overcome. Second, in the second quarter, and beyond. I want to thank executive producer Ari Schaaf, executive director Ezra Jacobs, the director Moshe Richester, technical director David Raviv, cameraman we saw Tannenbaum, Ben Zuckerman, Michelle Kami, and Zev Solovich, and the tech ops, Mariah Berkovich, doing so much behind the scenes to bring this game to you. And, and so many people have done so much behind the scenes to ensure that this whole tournament is broadcasted and the broadcasts go off without a hitch or minimum pitches. As the last 10 seconds will wind off the clock. Shall have it. A little scare from FTA, but the one seed is moving on. Stay tuned. For the YU Path Games, Pathways Post Game Show, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and be back with the Post Game Show. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Hello everyone and welcome to the YU Pathways program post game show. Start your future career sooner and save time and money with one of our YU Pathways programs. Earning credits towards or applying for a graduate degree as early as junior year. Visit yu.edu slash pathways for more information. Shall have it has just been an FTA. And now we're going to send it down to Barrett Kaplan standing by with our player of the game. Barrett. Thank you guys so much. What a game. Got a little scare in the beginning. But you guys turned it around in the second half. What did that? What was that drive? Um, I think we've never sh we never should have been in that situation in the start. Um, we definitely didn't play up to our potential, and we start picking up the next game. Got it. And moving forward, how are we gonna look, how are we gonna look to pick up the game? We just, need to, we just need to follow our coaching uh, instructions and and ex execute our game plan. Got it. You guys got a good uh, good celebrate uh, celebrate. Yeah, go celebrate. Thank you so much, guys. Back to you guys over there. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Avi Halpert, our player of the game. Shall have it moving on. SCR coming up next against McCorchheim. You're not going to want to miss it. For Asha Fryer, I'm Charlie Bantheim saying so long. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> 